The study of the history of clothing and textiles traces the availability and use of textiles and other materials and the development of technology for the making of clothing over human history. The wearing of clothing is exclusively a human characteristic and is a feature of most human societies. It is not known when humans began wearing clothes but anthropologists believed that animal skins and vegetation were adapted into coverings as protection from cold, heat and rain, especially as humans migrated to new climates, and an alternative hypothesis is that covering may have been first used for other purposes such as magic, decoration, cult, or prestige, and later found to be practical as well. Clothing and textiles have been important in human history and reflects the materials available to a civilization as well as the technologies that had been mastered. The social significance of the finished product reflects their culture. Textiles can be felt or spun fibers made into yarn and subsequently netted, looped, knit or woven to make fabrics which appeared in the Middle East during the Late Stone Age. From the ancient times to the present day, methods of textile production have continually evolved, and the choices of textiles available have influenced how people carried their possessions, clothed themselves, and decorated their surroundings. Sources available for the study of clothing and textiles include material remains discovered via archaeology, a representation of textiles and their manufacture in at, and documents concerning the manufacture, acquisition, use, and trade of fabrics, tools, and finished garments. Scholarship of textile history, especially its earlier stages, is part of material culture studies. Prehistoric Development The development of textile and clothing manufacture in prehistory has been the subject of a number of scholarly studies since the late 20th century. These sources have helped to provide a coherent history of these prehistoric developments. Evidence suggests that human beings may have begun wearing clothing as far back as 100,000 to 500,000 years ago. Early adoption of fibrous apparel genetic analysis suggests that the human body louse, which lives in clothing, may only have diverged from the head louse some 107,000 years ago, which supports evidence that humans began wearing clothing at around this time. These estimates predate the first known human exodus from Africa, although species of Homo who may have worn clothes and shared these louse infestations appear to have migrated earlier. Initial manufacture of clothes possible sewing needles have been dated to around 40,000 years ago. The earliest definite examples of needles originate from the Solutrean culture, which existed in France from 19,000 BC to 15,000. BC. The earliest dyed flax fibers have been found in a prehistoric cave in the Republic of Georgia and date back to 36,000 BP. The earliest evidence of weaving comes from impressions of textiles and basketry and nets on little pieces of hard clay, dating from 27,000 years ago and found in Dolna Vestanice in the Czech Republic. At a slightly later date the Venus figurines were depicted with clothing. Those from Western Europe were adorned with basket hats or caps, belts worn at the waist, and a strap of cloth that wrapped around the body right above the breast. Eastern European figurines wore belts, hung low on the hips and sometimes string skirts. Archaeologists have discovered artifacts from the same period that appear to have been used in the textile arts. Net gauges, spindle needles and weaving sticks, ancient textiles and clothing. The first actual textile, as opposed to skins sewn together, was probably felt. Surviving examples of gnarly binding, another early textile method, date from 6500 BC. Our knowledge of ancient textiles and clothing has expanded in the recent past thanks to modern technological developments. Our knowledge of cultures varies greatly with the climatic conditions to which archaeological deposits are exposed, the Middle East and the Arid. 
Fringes of Tyner have provided many very early samples in good condition, but the early development of textiles in the Indian subcontinent, sub-Saharan Africa and other moist parts of the world remains unclear. In northern Eurasia peat bogs can also preserve textiles very well. Early woven clothing was often made of full loom width straight, tied, or pinned in place. Ancient Near East The earliest known woven textiles of the Near East may be fabrics used to wrap the dead. Excavated at a Neolithic site at Catalho Uk in Anatolia, carbonized in a fire and radiocarbon dated to see. 6000 BC. Evidence exists of flax cultivation from c. 8000 BC in the Near East, but the breeding of sheep with a woolly fleece rather than hair occurs much later. 3000 BC. Ancient India The inhabitants of the Indus Valley civilization used cotton for clothing as early as the 5th millennium BC 4th millennium BC. According to the Columbia Encyclopedia, 6th edition, cotton has been spun, woven, and dyed since prehistoric times. It clothed the people of ancient India, Egypt, and China. Hundreds of years before the Christian era cotton textiles were woven in India with matchless skill, and their use spread to the Mediterranean countries. In the first cent, Arab traders brought fine muslin and calico to Italy and Spain. The Moors introduced the cultivation of cotton into Spain in the ninth cent. Fustians and Dimites were woven there and in the 14th cent, in Venice and Milan, at first with a linen warp. Little cotton cloth was imported to England before the 15th cent, although small amounts were obtained chiefly for candle wicks. By the 17th cent, the East India Company was bringing rare fabrics from India. Native Americans skillfully spun and wove cotton into fine garments and dyed tapestries. Cotton fabrics found in Peruvian tombs are said to belong to a pre-Inca culture. In color and texture the ancient Peruvian and Mexican textiles resemble those found in Egyptian tombs. Ancient Egypt evidence exists for production of linen cloth in ancient Egypt in the Neolithic period. 5500 BC, cultivation of domesticated wild flax, probably an import from the Levant, is documented as early as a C. 6000 BC other bast fibers including rush, reed palm, and papyrus were used alone or with linen to make rope and other textiles. Evidence for wool production in Egypt is scanty at this period. Spinning techniques included the drop spindle, hand-to-hand -hand spinning, and rolling on the thigh. Yarn was also spliced. A horizontal ground loom was used prior to the New Kingdom, when a vertical two-beam loom was introduced probably from Asia. Linen bandages were used in the burial custom of mummification, and art depicts Egyptian men wearing linen kilts and women in narrow dresses with various forms of shirts and jackets, often of sheer pleated fabric. Ancient China The earliest evidence of silk production in China was found at the sites of Yangshao culture in Xia, Shanxi, where a cocoon of Bombyx mori, the domesticated silk worm, cut in half by a sharp knife is dated to between 5000 and 3000 BC. Fragments of primitive looms are also seen from the sites of Hemadu culture in Yuyao, Zhejiang, dated to about 4000 BC. Scraps of silk were found in a Liangzhu culture site at Qin's Hanyang in Huzhou, Zhejiang, dating back to 2700 BC. Other fragments have been recovered from royal tombs in the Shang dynasty. Under the Shang dynasty, Han Chinese clothing or Han Fu consisted of a yi, a narrow cuffed, knee-length tunic tied with a sash, and a narrow, ankle-length skirt, called Shang, worn with a bixi, a length of fabric that reached the knees. Clothing of the elite was made of silk in vivid primary colors. Ancient Thailand The earliest evidence of spinning in Thailand can be found at the archaeological site of Takai located in central Thailand. Takai was inhabited during the end of the 1st millennium BC to the late 1st millennium AD. 
Here, archaeologists discovered 90 fragments of spindle world dated from 3rd century BC to 3rd century AD, and the shape of these finds indicate the connections with South China and India. A spindle whirl is a disc or spherical object that fits onto the spindle to increase as well as maintain the speed of spinning. Ancient Japan The earliest evidence of weaving in Japan is associated with the Jomon period. This culture is defined by pottery decorated with cord patterns. In a shell mound in the Miyagi prefecture, dating back about 5,500, some cloth fragments were discovered made from bark fibers. Hemp fibers were also discovered in the Torihama shell midden, Fukui prefecture, dating back to the Jomon period, suggesting that these plants could also have been used for clothing. Some pottery pattern imprints depict also fine mat designs proving their weaving techniques. The patterns on the Jomon pottery show people wearing short upper garments, close-fitting trousers, funnel sleeves, and rope-like belts. The depictions also show clothing with patterns that are embroidered or painted arch designs, though it is not apparent whether this indicates what the clothes look like or whether that simply happens to be the style of representation used. It is interesting to note that the pottery also shows no distinction between male and female garments. This may have been true because during that time period clothing was more for decoration than social distinction but it might also just be because of the representation on the pottery rather than how people actually dressed at the time. Since bone needles were also found, it is assumed that they wore dresses that were sewn together. Next was the Yayoi period, during which rice cultivation was developed. This led to a shift from hunter-gatherer communities to agrarian societies which had a large impact on clothing. According to Chinese literature from that time period, clothing more appropriate to agriculture began to be worn. For example, unsewn fabric wrapper around the body in poncho-type garments with head holes cut into them. This same literature also indicates that pink or scarlet makeup was worn but also that mannerisms between people of all ages and genders were not very different. However, this is debatable as there were probably cultural prejudices in the Chinese document. There is a common Japanese belief that the Yayoi time period was quite utopian before Chinese influence began to promote the use of clothing to indicate age and gender. From 300 to 550 AD was the Yamato period, and here much of the clothing style can be derived from the artifacts of the time. The tomb statues especially tell us that the clothing style changed from the ones according to the Chinese accounts from the previous age. The statues are usually wearing a two-piece outfit that has an upper piece with a front opening and close-cut sleeves with loose trousers for men and a pleated skirt for women. Silk farming had been introduced by the Chinese by this time period but due to silk's cost it would only be used by people of certain classes or ranks. The following periods were the Asuka and Nara when Japan developed a more unified government and began to use Chinese laws and social rankings. These new laws required people to wear different styles and colors to indicate social status. Clothing became longer and wider in general and sewing methods were more advanced. Classical period Philippines The classical Filipino clothing varied according to cost and current fashions and so indicated social standing. The basic garments were the behag and the tube skirt, what the Maran now call malong, or a light blanket wrapped around instead. But more prestigious clothes, lihin lihin, were added for public appearances and especially on formal occasions, blouses and tunics. Loose smocks with sleeves, capes, or ankle-length robes. The textiles of which they were made were similarly varied. In ascending order of value, they were abaca, abaca decorated with colored cotton thread, cotton, cotton decorated with silk thread, silk, imported print stuff, and an elegant abaca woven of selected fibers almost as thin as silk. In addition, Pigafetta mentioned both G-strings and skirts of bark cloth. Untailored clothes, however, had no particular names. 
Pandong, a lady's cloak, simply meant any natural covering, like the growth on banana trunks or a natal call. In Panay, the word karong, meaning curly hair, was applied to any short skirt or blouse, and some better ones made of imported chintz or calico were simply called by the name of the cloth itself, tabas. So, too, the wraparound skirt the Tagalogs called tapi was hardly considered a skirt at all. Visayans just called it habul or halong or even hulin. The usual male headdress was the pudong, a turban, though in Panay both men and women also wore a headcloth or bandana called saplung. Commoners wore pudong of rough abaca cloth wrapped around only a few turns so that it was more of a headband than a turban and was therefore called pudong pudong, as the crowns and diadems on Christian images were later called. A red pudong was called magalong, and was the insignia of braves who had killed an enemy. The most prestigious kind of pudong, limited to the most valiant, was, like their g-strings, made of pinai yusan. A gauze-thin abaca of fibers selected for their whiteness, tie-dyed a deep scarlet in patterns as fine as embroidery, and burnished to a silky sheen. Such pudong were lengthened with each additional feat of valor. Real heroes therefore let one end hang loose with affected carelessness. Women generally wore a kerchief called Chubata if it was pulled tight over the whole head, but they also had a broad-brimmed hat called Siaporterindic, woven of sago palm leaves. Some were evidently signs of rank. When Humabun's queen went to hear mass during Magellan's visit, she was preceded by three girls carrying one of her hats, a headdress from Cebu with a deep crown, used by both sexes for travel on foot or by boat, was called Sorok, which actually meant to go for water. The textile trade in the ancient world The exchange of luxury textiles was predominant on the Silk Road, a series of ancient trade and cultural transmission routes that were central to cultural interaction through regions of the Asian continent, connecting east and west by linking traders merchants, pilgrims, monks, soldiers, nomads and urban dwellers from China to the Mediterranean Sea during various periods of time. The trade route was initiated around 114 BC by the Han Dynasty, although earlier trade across the continents had already existed. Geographically, the Silk Road or Silk Route is an interconnected series of ancient trade routes between Chang'e in China, with Asia Minor and the Mediterranean extending over 8,000 kilometers on land and sea. Trade on the Silk Road was a significant factor in the development of the great civilizations of China, Egypt, Mesopotamia, Persia, the Indian subcontinent, and Rome, and helped to lay the foundations for the modern world. Classical antiquity dressing Classical antiquity favored wide, unsewn lengths of fabric, pinned and draped to the body in various ways. Ancient Greek clothing consisted of lengths of wool or linen, generally rectangular and secured at the shoulders with ornamented pins called fibulae and belted with a sash. Typical garments were the peplos, a loose robe worn by women, the clamis, a cloak worn by men, and the chilton, a tunic worn by both men and women. Men's chitons hung to the knees, whereas women's chitons fell to their ankles. A long cloak called a hamation was worn over the peplos or clamis. The toga of ancient Rome was also an unsewn length of wool cloth worn by male citizens draped around the body in various fashions, over a simple tunic. Early tunics were two simple rectangles joined at the shoulders and sides, later tunics had sewn sleeves. Women wore the draped stola or an ankle-length tunic, with a shawl-like pallor as an outer garment. Wool was the preferred fabric, although linen, hemp, and small amounts of expensive imported silk and cotton were also worn. Iron Age Europe The Iron Age is broadly identified as stretching from the end of the Bronze Age around 1200 BC to 500 AD in the beginning of the medieval period. Bodies and clothing have been found from this period, preserved by the anaerobic and acidic conditions of peat bogs in northwestern Europe. A Danish recreation of clothing found with such bodies indicates woven wool dresses, tunics and skirts. 
These were largely unshaped and held in place with leather belts and metal brooches or pins. Garments were not always plain, but incorporated decoration with contrasting colors, particularly at the ends and edges of the garment. Men wore breeches, possibly with lower legs wrapped for protection, although Boucher states that long trousers have also been found. Warmth came from woolen shawls and capes of animal skin, probably worn with the fur facing inwards for added comfort. Caps were worn, also made from skins, and there was an emphasis on hair arrangements, from braids to elaborate Subian knots. Soft-laced shoes are made from leather protected the foot.